The Western Reserve she Board will now? come to. Really? Oh. She has her glasses. No, I, I'll doesn't. make it. I just didn't know. Should we sit over there and hold it for you? Maybe you can see it. I'll sit right in that chair over there. So does this mean it's my turn? No. no. Hmm? You should be. Yeah. 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 Y
Bethany Jones, she's doing in fourth. Jones, so she's doing in fourth. Uh, 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 six or seven. Uh, 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 they just need it all back. They just give you numbers. Like, like, today is a yeah. market like 40, 36. Yes, so the factors are 46. So move second. Yep. So move yeah. second. Yeah. Yeah. So move second. Yep. So move yep. second. Yep. 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 <laughs> yes, yes. What are we on, number seven? So we're done. <laughs> we adjourn. Are we on the principles? Okay, um, go ready? ahead. We're ready? No, no. <laughs> Not really a whole lot going on. You can't get for him either. Oh, finish. oh, oh yeah. yeah, we're done. Oh. You're getting out early, early tomorrow. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Okay, that's okay. Right. Okay. Okay. All right, meeting adjourned. Yeah. Well, what you mean? Oh, oh here he is. Hey, I'm stuck here till 7.30 no matter what. Josh is at basketball over the other building. Uh, <laughs> come on, Rich. I was calling. Oh. Oh, cool. it no, it doesn't. I always have to open up the screen. I can yeah, yeah. pronounce it. I was at the screen, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you go back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to work here at the back. Hi, Richard. Hi, guys. How are you? Okay. Oh, it seems like I was president when I was. Happy New Year. So, Happy New Year. Lovely weather. Hi, did you have to wear a coat? Did you park? I wish you missed it. Did you park it right out by the doorway? You shut up. You need to start parking. Nobody knows you. Nobody cares. I'm trying to teach you to break those rules. And even though the temperature's up, you should still have a jacket on. Yeah. Oh, you're lifting. Yeah. 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 That's the same kind of cheeks. So what do we do with this? The selection of president, vice president. How about that? You've been here before? No. We nominate somebody, yes. and then we vote on it. So, like, Lisa nominates you for the president, and Miss Lewis second. I'm not second, bitch. I'm not nominating them. <laughs> Just to make Because I'm nominating, she's seconding that one. <laughs> there you go. Just to make sense. Don't get this screwed Have fun with that. <laughs> Jeez. It's, it's been a long day. <laughs> it has. Okay, I think my phone's on. Now we can start. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll call the organizational meeting, Western Reserve Local Schools, to order. May I have roll call? Mark Halls. Present. Richard Blevins. Present. Melissa Potts. Present. Lisa Powell. Present. Tracy Simmons. Stand for the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That was my teacher voice. Oh, scared me. He's passive. Election of president and vice president. <laughs> Nomination for president. I nominate Mark Halls. And I second it. Mr. Bladitz? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Okay. Now we need a nomination for vice president. And I will nominate. Missy Potts. I will second it. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Congratulations to me. It's all you. Congratulations. 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 All right, who's the president? Is there an oath of office yeah. Oath of office for newly Nothing elected for president and vice president? I'm open, I'm open, I'm open. You do. And, and twirl around your finger and pop your chin. I do. Just, 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 okay. I do. I did. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the state of Ohio as well?
and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as a member of the Board of Education of the Western Reserve Local School District, Mahoning County, Ohio, to the best of your ability and in accordance with the laws now and in effect hereafter to be enacted during your continuance in said office and until your successor is elected and qualified. If so, please answer, I do. I do. I, I, will be too. I do. Okay. <laughs> we do. All right. Am I, now, Mar am I now married to Mark? Yeah, you might be. Can I have your deputies? Official. Okay. Mm -hmm. Treasurer's recommendations. <coughs> it is recommended that the service fund for the calendar year of 2018 be approved in the amount of $7,500 to be used for expenses <coughs> of board members or their official representatives in performance of their duties while attending in-service training sessions, workshops, or conferences. So moved. I'll second. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Hawks? Yes. Motion carried. It is re recommended that the treasurer be given authorization to invest in active funds wherever possible <clears throat> with the Farmers National Bank of Canfield. So moved. I'll second. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Motion carried. <clears throat> per, Ohio, per Ohio Revised Code 321.34, it is recommended that the treasurer be authorized to secure advances whenever possible on the 2018 property tax collections from the county auditor. Second. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Motion carried. It is recommended that the treasurer be given authorization to issue and sign checks to meet payroll and invoices in accordance with the adopted appropriate appropriation measure in effect. So moved. Second. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Motion carried. It is recommended that the 2018 regular meetings of the Board of Education be held. Second, second Thursday, Thursday again. Six o'clock. Yes. Okay, you second agree? Thursday. Yeah. So moved. Six o'clock. I'll second. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Motion carried. It is recommended that be appointed to serve as OSBA legislative liaison for 2018 to share information with board members from OSBA about state and federal education related legislation. Is that the one you, that the one you like? That's not the one you like. Don't you like one of them? Let's nominate Rich. Rich Blevins? <laughs> yep. Keep it simple. I make a motion. I second. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Thank you. Motion carried. Seven. It is recommended that be appointed to serve as SBA Student Achievement <clears throat> Liaison for 2018 to share with board members information from OSBA on ways to improve student achievement. I think Lisa wants to do that. Oh. That sounds like a Lisa thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fuck off. You're welcome. Gosh, you know? Yeah, you wouldn't know. I know. Total, right? Nominee. We're trying to not scare him away right out, right out the gate. Mr. Blavins, do you second? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Mrs. Potts? <laughs> yes. Mrs. Powell? Yep. Mr. Blavins? Yes. Mr. Hulse? Yes. 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 Isn't that, that's I what happens to me at all my meetings, as I don't go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you start going. Has he only been here a couple of meetings? We don't want to scare him uh, away. We don't want to run. He, is, he does look very nice. No, right? I make a motion to adjourn the organizational meeting. Okay. So moved. Mr. Sorry. Powell? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. <laughs> Mr. Sorry. Hall? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. And motion is So, so third and fourth and fourth and third and fourth and okay. Waiting for a year. Just, just motion, make motions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, I like motions. Now we have to do roll call again. So. Okay. 
You do not have to do the budgeting, however. All right, very okay. good. All right, oh, this is the regular it. meeting for January 11, 2018, Western Reserve Local Schools. May I have a roll call? Mm -hmm. Richard Blevins? Yes. Mark Halls? Yes. Melissa Potts? Here. Lisa Powell? Still present. Still here. Okay. Treasurer's recommendations. It is recommended that the minutes of the December 14, 2017 Board of Education meeting be approved as mailed to each member in advance of the meeting. So, so moved. I'll second. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. So moved. I mean, carried. <laughs> Motion carried. Well, geez. Okay, long day. <laughs> It is recommended that the December 2017 financial reports <clears throat> be approved and the December listing of bills be approved as mailed to each member in advance of the meeting. So moved. Second. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Levins? Yes. Motion carried. We're going to add Mr. Sin as being here. Yes. Okay, yes. Okay. Because he is, he is here. He is yes. here. Yes. Yes. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It is recommended that the board approve Kathy Romack, treasurer, as the design, designee for the HB.9 public records training requirement. Second. Yuck. That I, sounds I am willing to give that up if anybody wants nope, to. No. But you do such a good job. Nope. Yes, yeah, we would want to that. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Sin? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Motion carried. It's a fun one. Sounds like a good time. <laughs> it is recommended that the board approve the following donations. $1,900 from Robert Sen Studios and $100 from Casual Carpets. I'll second. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Sen? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Motion carried. <laughs> It is recommended that the board waive the adoption of the tax budget in accordance with section 5705.281 of the Ohio Revised Code. Seven. Sorry. Mr. Sen? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. That's okay. when you have to, you still have to go down to the, I know you only want yes. to tell you, we used to have to go down to the county and sit with the auditor and go over everything. And we just do everything online. That's so nice. Yeah. It's very nice. I don't like that. Yeah. Motion carried. It is recommended that the board approve the payment of the filing fees for the 2017 financial disclosure statements and the Center for Public Investment Management, CPIM, for those employees of the district required to submit them. What is this? <laughs> those are the ethics and financial disclosures. <coughs> that Doug and I have to turn in on not every staff. aspect of our life, not just us. Mm -hmm. And the CPIM is the investment training that I have to do every year. Okay. <coughs> so, sounds like fun. Yeah. I'll second. Mm -hmm. Did you leave it? Sure. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Sick? Yes. <coughs> Motion carried. Right. Sorry. Yeah. It is recommended that the board authorize the treasurer <clears throat> to expenditure adjust the full balance from the emergency levy fund 016 to the general fund 001. Second. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Sin? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Okay, right. <laughs> It is recommended that the following resolution be adopted for Western Reserve Local Schools to join the Ohio School Boards Association's Legal Assistance Fund. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Western Reserve Local Board of Education wishes to support the efforts of other boards of education to obtain favorable judicial decisions, and whereas the Ohio School Boards Association Legal Assistance Fund has established for this purpose, therefore the board hereby resolves to participate in the OSBA LAF uh, for calendar year 2018 and authorize the treasurer pay the LAF $250. So moved. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Sin? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Hawks? Yes. <coughs> Motion carried. 
It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the renewal of membership of Ohio School Boards Association OSBA for the 2018 calendar year at the cost of $2,798. So moved. Second. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Sen? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Why don't we just make an all one? Because you don't have to join the legal assistance fund. So that's all. Right. 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 And you get all the uh, policy changes. But I mean, if you're going to pay three thousand dollars, you wouldn't pay two hundred fifty. Yeah, but they do also pay right. us pay separately yeah, for right. policy changes <laughs> as well. <laughs> so <laughs> insane, isn't it? A little bit. It's a cool one. It is. It's to read all of them. The next resolution is for to put the levy on. So it was sent to everybody ahead of time. Is recommended that the following resolution be approved: a, resolu a resolution determining to proceed with the submission to the electors of Western Reserve Local School District the question of the renewal of an existing tax <coughs> levy pursuant to sections 5705.194 through 5705.197 of the revised code. And this is totally a renewal, right? This is a yes. this is a ten-year renewal. First one we have up. <clears throat> we have three in three years. What's the total millage on this? Does it say it is four point nine eight. Problem is you're locked into <clears throat> because the way the law is you're locked into the when it was passed, you're locked into that millage. And I think back then millage was ninety six million. So millage has gone up, but what you're receiving is still the original money from back then. Which is four hundred twenty-five thousand. Four point one mills. Four point one mills, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And our other two mills combined are four point nine. Yes. What we may do on the next two is bring them into one. So because we combine, I remember combining those two into one. Is yeah. That so that way they don't have to go three years or right. Right. It, it won't take effect. And, and the way our millage is, we are we're at the floor. We're at the lowest you can be. So for our taxpayers, the, to not vote for the renewal, they are still going to be charged the same amount of money they're charged now because we're at the floor. So then does it matter if it passes? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. It but it's just it's 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 earmarked it's, for that yes. specific yes. point. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it, 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 it needs to pass, and I'm going to start going So the tax money the wouldn't come to us, though? They would just go? Uh, for the May thing, like start doing some talking about because we can't really uh -huh. tell them the vote for it. We can right. go out and tell them Just what it's about, what yeah. the village is, mm -hmm. and what it goes for. Maybe that's to come with yeah. you. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, absolutely. <coughs> yeah. It's, not, it's, it's not new money. It's right, exactly. Money. I'm okay with that. I just, mm -hmm. yeah, the new money really freaks me out. Key yeah. word is renewal. Yep. Yeah. yeah. All right, so move on that one. Second. Second. Mr. Sen? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Motion carried. Superintendent's recommendations. <laughs> it is recommended that a two-hour delay be approved for January 3rd and that the calamity days be approved for December 14, 2017 and January 5, 2017 and January 8, 2017. Thanks. So moved. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Sen? Yes. Motion carried. The reason you're doing two hour delays now, we used to not do them before, is because we're on hours mm -hmm. versus days. Um, our school year comprise, is comprised of 1,157 hours. State only requires 1,001 hours. And for elementary, it's even less uh, hours. So we're well above that, but you still have to keep track of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to make it up if you just have a two-hour delay. Basically. Well, it goes against your hours. Yeah. Yeah. Sure it comes mm -hmm. off your 11.57. Yeah. Or two hours early tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like okay. we're going to have it on the east tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That will come on next month. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Is it recommended that Edward Anthony be hired as varsity baseball coach for the 2017-18 school year as per salary schedule in effect? Mm -hmm. I'll second. 
Mr. Hulls? Yes. Mrs. Fox? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Singh? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Motion carried. <clears throat> It is recommended that Jacob Zatchok be hired as the assistant varsity baseball coach for 2017-18 school year as per salary schedule in effect. So moved. Second. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Sin? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Hawks? Yes. Motion carried. It is recommended that Joseph M. Sorensky be hired as varsity, varsity softball coach for the 2017-18 school year as per the salary schedule in effect. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Sin? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Hawes? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. <coughs> Motion carried. It is recommended that Doug Harmon be hired as the assistant varsity softball coach for the 2017-18 school year as per the salary schedule in effect. So Second. Mr. Sin? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Motion carried. It is recommended that Brielle Burton be added to the certified substitute list. So Second. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Sin? Motion carried. It is recommended that Amber Boyer be added to the classified substitute list. So moved. <coughs> Mr. Halls? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Powell? Yes. Mr. Sin? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. <coughs> Motion carried. It is recommended to add Reese Snyder to the athletic worker list. Second. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Mrs. Howe? Yes. Mr. Sin? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Hulls? Yes. <coughs> Motion carried. All right, our building principal reports. <laughs> Good evening. Well, yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Um, a couple of things that have been going on. We just had our spelling bee on Wednesday. We were just having the, the previous Friday. We had snow, so we didn't. So Haley Fellows in fifth grade won, and Connor Cochran in fourth grade was runner up. But it's the first time that I can remember that the third and fourth places were held by second graders. Ooh. Pretty impressive. Wow. wow. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Nice. Um, you know, we've, been, we've worked on math, we've been working on math, and, and things are going very well with math. So we're starting reading, writing, language arts, all of us are. And one of the things that we have to find is something to better diagnose in the fall, because we use the state diagnostics right now. Persons here, they don't, they, they're, they don't give us a really good picture of kids. They're, they're, um, for what the state expects on the assessments, they're pretty easy um, as you pronounce. So we need to look and see. This year we have, I'm gonna give you our third grade results and some of the data. And um, we identified 13 third graders. We have to identify our kindergarten, first, second, and third graders um, as students that need improvement in reading. And we have to write reading improvement monitoring plans. So we identified 13 third graders based on the diagnostics. We, and if we don't identify them after they've taken the, after, before they took the test, we can get deduction points on our scores for the kids that we didn't. Well, there were 13 that didn't meet the criteria. So we are now writing rooms for those. In fact, tomorrow we'll be writing rooms for those. We got our scores back and right before Christmas and we're writing rooms for those tomorrow. Um, we're going to do everything we can to have, make sure that they meet requirements in the spring so we don't get those DDI points, but we might anyway, just because it happened last year, we had two last year. So we have to better be able to identify these kids. So we're going to start looking at some assessments that would mean purchasing, sorry, but yeah, it would mean purchasing them. So one of the, um, there's, there's a couple of very good recommended ones. We're also looking at some language arts reading series and um, some of them come with reading series. So we're just gonna wait and see what everyone has to say this year and we'll be able to make a decision before the beginning of the year so we're ready to use it next year. 
we just have to do a better job. And really, Ohio has records their test, is their diagnostic is what we've been using, but it, it's not working very well. So, so like what you need to purchase is, is, I thought we had like a reading program that we, we purchased. So we, this would be like an enhancement to that, or is it a whole new program? We don't really have, a, we have guided reading, okay. we have level, level literacy intervention. And so it's, that's really not a comprehensive program. So what's happening is when, when you're teaching reading, everyone's kind of doing their own thing. It's, it, it, and it comes together, but they, we don't have a program. So like with math, they were doing that, but then what this math does, it spirals. So they teach a skill and it comes back around and it, it kind of reviews it and it comes back around and it continues to do that. Right now, and it goes from grade level to grade level, it, it really stair steps that way. Our reading, because we have you know kindergarten through fifth grade in the elementary and then sixth through eight in the middle school, we don't have that comprehensive where it's going to kind of build upon each other because we're really we really don't have a program. And so, have you ever heard about United Locals reading the reading? Yes, yes. they have. And they, I think I mean, is that something that we would ever advance <coughs> upon because right. it's working? Well, here's the thing: we are looking at the we we actually got we were accepted into a collaborative through the county and it's it's sort of what United Local has been doing um, and basically what the it's they're the liter literacy literacy collaborative I don't know that that will fit our need maybe so we are going to Columbus there's a group of us Kristen's going I'm going in April um, the middle school will be a part of this as well and um, we're going to look at as a whole is the county different interventions like right now we're using level literacy intervention that is working and so yes it's something like that that's kind of what we're looking at because I mean their scores have just really popped right of that. exactly it, it will be something like that um, United Locals helped us a lot with our math they actually adopted the math series that we have about six years before we did mm -hmm. so we went down and visited them um, we've had collaboration so that's they have been helpful so we're looking at that the coaching model right now they have way more funding than we do um, through title and so that's how they do that you know some of the things that I've thought about for next year we have our title one tutors and we usually have two tutors here and two tutors at the other end and you know things we need to consider is you know do we do the tutor do we have like one coach say and then do we hire some para pros or some uh, some aides and train them you know, you get some people, some moms that, or, or people that want to be aides. They don't need a full-time job, and they or they they can do that, and they want. And we train them in the training program, where we send them to the county and have them train, and we get a little bit more bang for our buck because we don't. It doesn't cost as much. So those kind of things is what you know. We have to think a little bit differently about it, so we can reach more kids, and that's the big thing. Is reaching more, and that's what they do. Yeah. That's really what they do. Is they do coaches, and the coaches go in and work with the teachers. They become experts in reading, and they work. And that's kind of what this model is: is like the coach, and then you have people under. I know Doug's probably familiar with that from from Austin Town. Mm -hmm. They do that. So anyway, um, we're we're going to start digging deeper. The other piece that we're looking at is K one and two. They don't have a test per se like we do. They lay the foundation for third grade the whole way up. That's, those are foundation skills. And if you don't have a strong foundation, you know the whole way up, you struggle. So we're bringing second and third grade together. That's what we're doing. That's what this data is going to go for. And we're looking at, we're going to have second grade look at, we need to start earlier. We need to start like mid second grade now, um, going deeper on these skills instead of um, compare and contrast and looking at it, the um, story elements in this and the story elements in this story in this one, we need to take an author and maybe do two stories from the same author or we need to do a story and a video and compare it more deeply and start getting those skills and the kids can do it. Um, one of the things that showed that was kind of, we were really a little bit surprised, we thought they had trouble with the, with the computer skills and we thought writing would be our lowest, writing was actually our highest area. So I'm going to give you some things, um, I'm going to save that for last. So we get these reports. You can just take one and pass them down. Um, we get these reports. This is the first, the first one I'm giving you is it's the actual item analysis. So it's the standard. So it may have um, like one is determine and clarify the meaning of unknown and multiple meaning words. And so it tells us what percentage of students in third grade earn zero points one point, 
these are, and it'll tell you how many possible points. So this is just a one point question. The possible points are the ones that are already typed in. And the ones that are typed in, was a per, that's the percentages. Here's the okay. possible points are right oh, okay. here. The, the percentages, so 40% of our students scored zero, 60% scored uh, one, which was good, they got it. The numbers that are written are the actual number of students. Okay. So we did that. So when you look through this, you can see this gives us a ton of information. So these are the things that we're going over. We just got these, so this we're going over with the third grade teachers and, um, and the second grade teachers. So they know exactly where these kids, um, like compare and contrast, we use Venn diagrams, we do that. Mm -hmm. We need to do other things more than that. So that's what we're looking. We're also calling the county and we have, they have some very, very good, um, um, like literacy people and English people. So we're gonna call them into their experts in that field. We also have, I'm gonna get, these are, these are actual student reports. So this is what we get on each student. They're all different students. So you can just grab one and you can take one and pass them. We have, it just seems so crazy. Is the test constantly changing? Because it seems like we're pushing these mm -hmm. kids it for is. this crazy stuff. And, I mean, like, numbers aren't really good. They're not. It's like, well, well then second remember, grade, can't we just teach them to third read? Third grade test <laughs> that we gave third graders in October. So they've been in third grade for a month. Right. So, you know, you definitely have to see this come up. But because, I mean, every year yeah. we get different statistics so right. on different breakdowns. It's like every year yeah. they keep raising the bar. It's yeah. Like, yeah. So well, last year, like, we're just chasing the kids, you know? Like, they will. Well, these poor little kids are so little, and we're just like... Because they, they said after a certain point, it has to be... This. Yeah, to 100%. Last year on this test, we had 23% that passed. This year we had 56. So we are showing improvement, okay. which is good. Um, I don't want to be complacent with that. I don't want to say that 56 is good enough. I want to was say... Was it the same statistics and the same, based on the um, same criteria? Yep, same criteria, yeah. yeah. Same criteria. Um, when, you, when we look at the reports that I just gave you, that's, an, that's a, a student. If you look at, that's their score, and these are all students that need improvement. But if you go to the second page, it's exactly the same as that page I just gave you, but it's specific to that child. So we can look at that student, we can write their reading improvement and monitoring plan based on exactly what they need. So that's what's happening tomorrow. That's good. Okay. So, yeah. So, and, and every child gets those, not just the students that did not um, score at that 700. 700 is a score for proficient. 44. I just hate all these scores though. I just hate that we're making these kids feel so bad. You know, I right. feel like they're not good enough. And right. And we're not. And the these third graders are actually reading better than the third graders three years ago by far. But yeah. still, it's not. It good is. Enough. We're always just telling them you're not good enough. And what you, you know? have to what you have to know is we are not sharing those scores with these yeah, kids. We're not. And and, and and I get it. I mean, I get it. And we have. But they to. know the ones that haven't passed do. the first time and the second time. They know the third grade. You know, yeah. they and well, the first yeah. time. In the second time, everybody takes it. So no matter what, everyone's taking it. They take the yeah, as a parent, it's, it is. It's somebody, and you know the kid's going to yeah. struggle. I have a kid like that. Yeah. Oh, I've got it. in college now. Yeah. I'm struggling. Like, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it scares me to death. I have my own kid like that mm -hmm. who didn't pass. And, yeah. you know, you look at that, and, and you are defeated. And, you know, all we can do is give them as much intervention. We are giving them so much more intervention now than we did. And, you know, the teachers are giving interventions in their classroom. Yeah, it, it is. It's fresh. We're frustrated. Oh, you guys should be frustrated. frustrated. It's just so, like, it's so hard. Now, I went to a... Nothing's easy. From when our kids were in school, really. I mean, oh, you it was, now, it's crazy. They got to be kids. And yeah, um, they got to play. They got to play. They now put limits on how much we can test them through state and local tests. Good. So it is. It's frustrating. Yeah. We're frustrated. We don't want to give them tests like that. I mean, I it's not, you know... Do we see it changing now with the change, like, with... You know, all the initiatives with the new president who we have proposed well, different, like, like, to we see, like, because that's the kicker if we change our whole framework to, like, yeah. do these tests and well, then every day just scrap it all. Two bills currently in the legislature that are looking to do away with the kindergarten these tests well, the, you, yeah. and the third grade reading right. tests. We need some kind of benchmarks, yeah. but I mean, but not the ones they have. This is insane. And and, and, and elementary, we're doing algebra, we're doing geometry, yeah. we're doing. You know, this oh, analytical ladies. comparison this stuff. It's like, let them learn to read and add and subtract, for God's sakes. And let them learn to analyze stories and compare. Well, what the legislature's looking at is yeah. doing away with a lot of the, the so called new common core and going back to allowing districts right. to set up some of their own testing. They have two House bills out right now that are wanting to, they want to do. 
put limits on it. So you know, I mean, teachers, Kristen, you know what your kids can do. Oh, these are she knows. She doesn't need this. You don't need this. I'm giving you this yeah. basic test. She, she knows. It's yeah. for the as teachers a, a IP for the kids. reading comprehension. Right. You know. You don't need to test. You, can, you know it. You see, you see it more than I do. Yeah. I mean, I, I can tell you I have three right now that when we get to third grade, I honestly don't know. Well, and I feel like it's crazy that we're like we're like honing in on comparing stories when mm -hmm. if they can't even read, yeah, let them learn to read and add and subtract. But how are they going to be functioning when they're in, in high school? Honestly. Seriously. So one of the in, in, in one of the things you're looking at is having the new common sense. Yeah, right? How do you figure things focus. out? You want to come? Yeah. I'm going yeah. next week. You want to come? We're with working me? on a board. He's going to want to get on a board. <laughs> seriously, because this is like it makes me crazy. Being a parent, Lisa, can't be the parent call, call, call. Let them. I can't wait till they meet. <laughs> I cannot wait. Isn't that going to be great? I want to come too. All right. Okay. Yeah, they, because really, you see what it does to kids, and you've lived it. Yes. You lived it. I'm still I've living it. it. It's you sad. live it, and so and you your passion just sometimes just comes mm -hmm. out and just you know. Kids are learning to hate school. I mean, yeah. it's not fun. It's hard. It's like, and it never was supposed to be easy. But there was like, it wasn't as stressed. Well, all these tests have them constantly stressed. They're just one right. test after another. There's and we know that there are certain kids that really struggle with reading, yeah. and it's a, it's a standardized. Yeah. So, some kids can't take tests. So some kids yes, just they can't. They can't test. But we we look at it for what it's worth. We mm -hmm. look at the data. It does show us some things, yeah. and on here. But we still are teaching kids. So. So here's some good news, people. <laughs> well, we have become known as the Recycling Center of Mahoney County. Um, our children made the green scene. Happy nice. New Year, Dylan. This is just the front page. Our nice. kids are now, we're, we're the, the only- Front page? Front page. Nice. We're, only we're the only school that's recycling milk cartons. Ooh, I have that's to tell right. you, we're doing tell, my, tell my sister this. I, I did, she's so proud, and she takes them for me sometimes. Mm -hmm. She does. This this is she an ordeal because this is what we do. We need something to keep her busy. Every day at lunch, we, have, we set up a milk station. We also have done something else, and we're helping Kim Lewis. She owes us really big, but she gives us a lot. She gives us a ton. So what we do is we have to wash them out. So if you can picture, this is a this is a third grade initiative. So our my third graders are on elementary, middle, and high school team. That's just what we call them. They rotate weeks. And they have a long table set up. We have a milk dump station. Oh, they're so the carton crew? The kids put the carton crew, that's what we call them, the carton crew. And they dump the milk into the milk bucket, and then they put it into one of the sudsy water buckets, and then they dump it out, and they put it into a trash can. We fill up a bag every two days. Nice. Kids are now buying milk just so they can oh, recycle milk. Oh, great. Okay. And so, and is that so, the purpose a little bit? Look, I see. <laughs> Maybe we should put the milk money into a different jug. <laughs> and, for, and then we can, and we can really probably, probably fund many things. But they are also, um, they are having a great time. So what this does is it helps Kim Lewis of the Green Team, who does amazing things for everybody. We are tabulating how many were, how many milk cartons we're collecting. We know about how many goes in a bag. And we're keeping, and we have a, if you look in the wall on the, in the cafeteria, we have milk cartons for every bag that we've collected. We started this um, right before Christmas, right after Thanksgiving. We're also collecting the bottle caps, any kind of plastic bottle caps. And she is going to take them to Indiana, and we're going to get our buddy bench Ooh, for the playground with nice. those. Um, so a lot of things have, they're all kid initiatives. I mean, they're, they're kids, they're my um, fifth grade, fourth and fifth graders. They've organized it, they made, they made the buckets and cans, now they're handing them out. They put the signs in them of what kind of <coughs> plastic um, bottle caps we can, can we can have. They're collecting them and counting them and putting it. So it really, they're kid initiatives, which is awesome. fantastic. It's it's really, really good. So and they're doing it. I mean, really, right now, my milk carton crew kind of runs itself. I mean, I'm there, but I don't, I don't have to do anything except for get it all ready and set up for them. They do everything else completely. So it, it's good. It's a great responsibility for them. It teaches them civic action and good things. Awesome. So, yep. Oh, great. That's it. And we made the front page. Yeah. We should on this one. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. We, should them, we should get them like a red apple um, or something. The carton crew or something. One of the things Debbie hit on, she was talking about the item analysis for the test. Uh, this past week, uh, we had a representative from the uh, BSC come to our school and, and kind of review that and go over our math teacher, 6th, 7th, 8th grade. Um, 
just to be able, and, and what it gives those teachers is, a, is an explicit picture of, you know, I hit this concept pretty well last year, maybe I didn't get to this part. So it gives them a little bit of a roadmap of, of where um, they need to focus on this year, where last year's groups coming in were strong. So it kind of individualizes the instruction, gives them an opportunity to do that. So um, that took place uh, this past week. Um, one of the things that we're working on in the language arts department, um, 6 through 12, uh, is not starting but kind of refocusing our writing across the curriculum. So, you know, I'm sure as we talked about like the Ohio graduation test, we had writing across the curriculum and the focus was how to communicate in that aspect. Um, but what we've done is um, we've, we've talk to and, and listen to a couple um, seminars with Dr. Beichelman, who is from uh, New Ohio State um, University and, and does a lot with writing and the state testing and so on. But really our focus is, is how to um, prepare and give our students the best opportunity to communicate with the spoken word, with the written word, and then apply that in their classes all the way through. So what we've started to do is we've looked at our sixth grade, how we can implement that in sixth grade, tied into seventh through eighth, all the way up through um, you know, our, our 11th and 12th grade writing process, which that's one of the benefits in having um, a six through 12 building, right? Is you get to really streamline those, those topics and those initiatives. Um, you have Michelle Sen, who's able to talk to, you know, Paul Henderson, who's at the top end, and, and really communicate, you know, and, and create that picture. And I feel like as we kind of um, get that done on our end, we can then talk to the fifth grade, fourth grade, and, and kind of get that implemented. And I think that's one of the things, whether um, students are tested or not, it's a life skill that they can use in whatever um, profession they do end up going into, the ability to communicate and the value in writing and, and is going to be something that, you know, is invaluable as they transition out. Um, the 26th is the end of the second grading period, so on our end, you know, we start changing some different classes. We have the, the semester change, so some of our semester classes, kids start new, new schedules. Um, so that's always kind of a good time, a little bit hectic, you know, getting schedules changed, getting kids in the right classes, uh, but a little bit of a fresh start too, right? So you kind of break down the Monday and, and the winter uh, that we're dealing with. Um, you know, that's, that's really all we have going on um, for the most part. I mean, and that's really been a, a big kick is just, uh, um, the writing and the communication piece, and I think that's going to be a real valuable thing that, that uh, we're going to invest in. So. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Reports, Tower? Nothing. Nothing? Reports? Yeah, nothing. 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 Oopsie. PTO. Nope. 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 Athletics, the game is canceled for tomorrow evening. Oh, is it? Um, yeah. I'm not sure if we're moving it to Saturday night or rescheduling. Who is it? What's with the M's crossed out? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we were like walking The M's out. crossed out as McDonald. Okay. It was McDonald. That's what we thought. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. Okay. It was all for McDonald. They had a big... Remember uh, when they boycotted Michigan? Parade. Oh, big, uh, they say you can't say M. It yeah. worked for a half. <laughs> second half didn't work so well. Okay. First half it worked really well. We're only down two. It played really well, but we did not play very well second half. The stores took off the M's, right? Right. Well, yeah. even yeah. they said the they they boycotted yeah. in all of Ohio that you couldn't use it now. Like yeah, like, yeah, like so. you had to use pickle. Like right. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. Well, one of our kids is Michael, and he calls him Michael. Right? He's looking at him. <laughs> you can use yeah. it. Yeah. What are you talking about? So I get it now. You drink elk? Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, uh, that's okay. One of the third graders came to me and said, Mrs. Frawley, when they cross that M out of home in the cafeteria, the home side of his verse, he goes, it's a really bad one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a garden like tool. That. Right. Yeah. Yeah. She came up to me and like, said, thank you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Isn't that funny? Just getting educated yeah. over and over and over. Yeah. over. Yeah. But they you know how to spell, all right? Yeah, That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought we even had several cancellations, so we went 19 days without playing because Mogador dropped us to go play in another tournament, so we lost a game wow. uh, with Mogador. Um, the bad thing with Ohio is, even though you have contracts with these folks, it doesn't matter. They can drop you. Mm -hmm. 
So they dropped us and went to a tournament in Jackson where they could compete because they're not, they're struggling basketball wise. So uh, we played McDonald's last Tuesday, of course, or Tuesday. Tomorrow night will be moved to probably another night. Who do we play to Jackson? Jackson. Yeah. And then we have, um, we play Tuesday, Friday, Saturday next week. So well, four games a week. You go know, from no games in 19 days to yeah. four Ten. games a week. Uh, a couple things Debbie mentioned, her and Kristen and April going to that Striving Readers Grant. That is through the county and it's a consortium of schools going together so that we can collaborate with each each other. And as you ask about United United, it's, it's part of that. Um, and we have gone down there and looked at that. Uh, for next year, we are looking at, we're trying to find different things for our uh, English language arts curriculum to make some, make some changes. We're looking at maybe some pilots that might be free for a year, and then we'll see how they work and we'll see if they're, if they're worth it. Um, <clears throat> last week, Debbie and Dallas and I sat down and looked at the calendar for next year. Uh, in February, you'll be voting on that. That'll be out to the uh, uh, to Tower here and shortly. Uh, we're looking at not again. There's only three schools right now in Mahon County looking at coming back after Labor Day. It would be us, Springfield, and uh, Jackson Milton. But we also have the three highest groups of four inches. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things a lot of the parents have requested and talked about was not starting school on Tuesday after Labor Day mm -hmm. uh, because the kids can't get a lot of things done until the night before to get on. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a professional uh, day that day, do some professional development there, and come back on Wednesday. Uh, that will be before. Yeah, that will help people. Yeah, they're not really on that. Yeah, they don't really That's what I think is crazy that the fair is almost there. And then I go to school. Yeah. So we're going to look at doing that so that at least that will help a lot of parents. I don't understand why these schools start before Labor Day, and they still go to school till June. Well, some of them start the week before, and then they take. Like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the fair off. Yeah, mm -hmm. like why do they so, do that? And they still end up going till June yeah. 7th or whatever it is. And it's a lot quite school. honestly, for us, it, it doesn't, I don't see any benefit to us getting out. And, and right. here's the thing the weather's nicer in September than it is yeah. May. Yeah. So yeah. May, it's still I cold. I would rather I'd go rather later. Go. I'd rather go too. Who cares if we go to the second week of June? Summer. It's cold it's anyways. Yeah. And you can't use any more of that excuse of testing because you retake that third grade test yeah. in the spring again. Right. So, you're really not mm -hmm. missing right. days. Um, um, next year will be a little different. Two year. years from now, we'll be on that form, oh, two week Christmas break mm -hmm. because of the way it falls. Um, we had an open enrollment meeting today. We went through all of our open enrollment for our next year. We looked at uh, changing some things. Our current open enrollment folks, we're going to put them all online so they can just register right online instead of us mailing them everything and then we forget to send it back. So we'll do a normal call for that and uh, we're going to do that in March. I think March 12th that'll go up and then um, it'll be due by May 1st and then our new enrollment. We're going to look at who we've lost and go back and try and find out where those... What's our numbers are. at now? How many enrollments do we have? Open enrollment total, 207. We have 400 and... 88 residents and 207. That's a lot. We have about half of our, what, five of the grade levels are closed. Yeah, we, we have five grade levels are closed because they're full. Uh, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade are all full. I was going to say the younger ones are low, though, right? The second and fourth grade are, yeah. are full. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. We're, trying to go, we're trying to leave some room for movements because this year we have a big influx of movements. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so really? yeah. we're trying to make room, leave some room for that, but we we could take anywhere from eight to fifteen, depending on grade level, mm -hmm. as we go up. And the nice thing, principals interview parents. They sit down with them, they meet them, they talk to them, which is we want to keep that part of the new open of the new students coming Agreed. in Agreed. as part of yeah. our the way we do things. Yeah. I think it's important to meet those parents, and then they'll register with Stephanie, and she can take them through everything. So. Those folks' forms will be due May 15th. The open enrollment current will be due um, May 1st. 
part of the problem of owning your own property, as you all know, are wastewater treatment plants. Uh, our wastewater treatment plant has been frozen for about a week, and it's not the actual first floor rates of the plant that move water, it's the parts that move the water out. out. Frozen. Present. So today they thawed. And I was out with Mark Biscuit a little bit, ago, a little bit ago. Thank God for Mark Biscuit and Char Charlie Hoffman. Um, it's flooded, so it's, not it's a little of a mess. So, the situation. Yeah, he's working at pumping it. Probably tomorrow morning he'll come back in, pump it again. But the, when it goes out to the beds, that's of course frozen, so they can't get it. And so yeah, yeah, it's actually. It's a fun situation. It's good yeah, it is. Good times, good times. It's a, it's a lot of, and you know, each time you're pumping that, it costs money. But we have to do that. Also, we're replacing lighting as it goes out. Um, John McDougall and Triple O last week replaced 10 lights on the outside that have burned out. Six of those we replaced with new LEDs, and four we just replaced with new bulbs. As they go, we're going to start putting the new LEDs in much brighter. Uh, they last longer too, don't they last? Ten years. From our, from our free kits? Yeah, from free kits. <laughs> um, we're meeting next week, speaking of free kits and First Energy, we're meeting next Friday. With First Energy at the meter and Valley Solar at the meter out here, First Energy claims that there's nothing wrong with the meter. However, our bills have not changed, and we're still paying for solar. Mm -hmm. Valley Energy feels that First Energy is utilizing their solar mm -hmm. and billing us. Oh. Oh. So it'll be interesting. I want to take my pit bull out with me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Next Friday with me because I can't wait. She, Somebody and, needs and to I'll make tell you, Erin. Make it make sense to me. Erin has been really good from do the solar Valley it's not Energy. Say it, She's right. frustrated. They've just not been. Cooperative wall. They came up and, and that's the solar people, right? That are Valley Solar, yeah. Mm -hmm. She's very frustrated because they, they've not even attempted to cooperate mm -hmm. to come out and look at this. They changed the meter when nobody was here, so they said. Wow. And they were supposed to contact us and Valley Energy, but they didn't. So wow. they said they changed it. So mm -hmm. uh, that will be next next Friday, 11 o'clock. We're meeting with them at the meter. <laughs> That's a meter you. Yeah. <laughs> it's a meter meeting. You know, because otherwise, it's gone so far, a year and a half without any, any real savings from the solar. Because First Energy is going us for the use right. of the solar. For the, crazy. For the yes. meter people. Also, one uh, very good thing, we are number 45. We are one of Ohio's top 100 schools for our performance index and testing. We are one-tenth of a point behind Canfield and one-tenth one, one of a point plus a hundredth behind Paul. So awesome. We are 45th out of 735 high schools wow, nice. in the state. It's nice. Um, Poland's 35th and Canfield's 36th. Mm -hmm. That's nice. That so, is. That's a pretty big honor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of things we're doing curriculum-wise, I think are paying off. Mm -hmm. We're doing a lot of new things, and teachers are working really hard on some of these things, and I think it's really starting to pay off. And as we keep going and improving and adding more things, I think it'll only make it better. That's all we got. Okay, thank you. You didn't tell me to be quiet tonight. I didn't. We thought it a lot. Mark didn't either. Mark's are nice. You think Mark's are nicer than me, though. We're trying to be, our resolution is to be nicer this year. Mark suggested that the SR, the school resource office, would be able to work with Yeah, I think you For the protection of the First of all, I have to check you because you're not going to allow to take a look. Including a pen. I just want it to make sense. Yeah. It hasn't made sense for you now. Yeah, that's. Well, then okay. they better go back. Yeah. All right, it's recommended that the board move into executive session to consider a matter required to be kept confidential by federal law or regulations or state statutes, and no action will be taken. So moved. I'll second it. 
Mrs. Huff? Yes. Ms. Gerson? Yes. Mr. Blevins? Yes. Mr. Hall? Yes. Mrs. Potts? Yes. Carrie? Six, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight, seven, eight, seight, seven, eight, seight, 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 se